What do you make of what Putin has said since the failed coup, how he's sought to explain it? What do you make of his performances? Well, he looks uh, not impressive at all. He is uh, really losing his message. is uh, clearly inadequate and uh, it lacks uh, coherence. He is trying to discredit uh, Prigozhin. He is trying to present the situation as if it was a great uh, victory. At the same time, there is no punishment uh, uh, following the agreement between Kremlin and Prigozhin. So um, there are a lot of things they don't uh, fit each other, so to say. So uh, there are more and more questions arising in uh, both uh, elites and uh, general public. Uh, Few people understood what it was uh, with the exception, uh, like, the most basic thing, everybody understood that it was a political crisis, but uh, very few people understand uh, what was the real thing about. But the general feeling is that uh, yeah, that uh, Putin was was not acting, uh, like, in an impressive manner. Mm. He looked quite pale and unimpressive, and the performance of the system in general was very... Poor. So Putin is now trying to correct this feeling. Uh, he is doing it rather hysterically, like he is in a kind of a fuss, you know. Uh, he he is he is trying like to replay it and replay it again and replay it again. He's not turning this page and going on to the next page, uh, which he should have done. Uh, actually, trying to forget this crisis. But no, he's coming back every day with new speech. And actually, all the speeches are all about the same, like yeah. how brave his warriors were, although uh, everybody saw that they just, just disappeared, that uh, Prigozhin was taking uh, headquarters, uh, arresting generals, shooting down helicopters, military helicopters, including those which are considered the best in the Russian army, um, and this a black alligator. And uh, so everybody saw this, and now Putin is trying to uh, overthrow this reality with his words. Yeah. His belief, his belief in the power of his word is just amazing. He really thinks like if I say more and more and more times, if, if I go on saying that stability, uh, bravery, courage, motherland, uh, rallying together, uh, solidarity, so. It will change the perception of the reality. And he's failing and he's nervous about this. He's coming back over to this again. And Sorry. You, you know him, uh, uh, Abbas. How will he have taken this personally? Is he coming? Do you think he keeps coming back to it because actually he feels wounded? He feels threatened. He feels humiliated. So he can't turn the page. And that's why we keep getting these nonsensical speeches because ultimately he's wounded. He's wounded inside. And that's right. It's pure psychology. There is no political reason to to dwell on this topic anymore. Uh, it's rather uh, it's better for it's better for him to just like go to the front. Uh, you have the war coming. Go down the trenches. Communicate to the soldiers. Uh, like like show that you're busy with something else. Uh, but no, he's coming over and over and over again to the same matter which was the thing which he lost. Obviously, there are, there are no political reasons to make it. It's pure psychology. So it's like compensation. He's tr- compensation for the trauma he received. He's trying to suppress this uh, feeling of guilt, feeling of shame, uh, trying to change it, to replay it. Uh, and it, do, what do you think of his future? Do you think you'll know this better than many people? Is this the first stage in him being over? The first stage in people coming... To, t- to get rid of him, is he fatally weakened? Well, he is definitely uh, weakened, but I can't call it uh, first stage because uh, the first stage, actually, uh, yeah, speaking about our domestic politics, he is weak, being weakened at least since 2018. His uh, ratings were going down, the protest mood uh, was going up uh, among general public. And uh, so, so 
and after this war started, and especially after the moment when the elites started understanding, and general public too started understanding that this his plan of brilliant blitzkrieg, mm. like it was with Crimea takeover in 2014, it failed. Uh, this elites joined this popular discontent, and the elites are very doubtful about him. So over the course of this one year and a half, the war continues. Uh, he's uh, he's all, always on the losing uh, on the losing side. He's little by little he's in, uh, losing strength and legitimacy. And uh, of course, what happened now uh, it just uh, showed everyone, even the most skeptical ones, that his system is uh, like almost a failure. You should understand that it was not an attack from outside. It's not that like his enemies like. America or Great Britain or Navalny or Khodorkovsky uh, attacked him. Well, in this case, yes, sometimes the system fails if the attack is too strong. But in this case, Prigozhin was not an opposition. Yeah. He was the, the person created by Putin himself. And, and this person inside revolts, uh, although it's not that he became suddenly liberal anti-war. Right. No, he was declaring his his plan to come back to war. And uh, so, and, and the fact that this crisis uh, arose inside the system, it, it shows that how how uh, dysfunctional the system has become. It's, it's producing crisis uh, just inside, by itself, without any efforts from outside. 